want to make sure we get this right, for people who can't make it to the meetings. We are now recording. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I now call to order our, it's our June council meeting a week later at 7.04 p.m. Um, before we have invocation, I want to let everybody know our community had a very big tragedy a week ago with the loss of a young child in a fire. A lot of folks have reached out to me want to know how to help. I spoke today with the local funeral home handling arrangements. There's a local woman, Peggy Sue Moore, who has set up a, a GoFundMe page. Uh, the funeral home confirmed that today. So if anybody wants to help and reach out to the family of Cage Pierce, um, the services will be later this week. And that's been something that's moved a lot of us. And I also want to say I saw a lot, see a lot of folks here tonight that were at the Juneteenth celebration and want to commend the committee, the town employees who work nonstop, this council, this council for having the vision to approve the Juneteenth and the awards. And um, on those notes, I ask you to join me uh, in the invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us gather here again tonight. Uh, thank you for bringing us together as a free society. Father, all we ask tonight is that our thoughts, actions, and the way we conduct ourselves be pleasing in your sight. Help us to think of those less fortunate and help us to hear every speaker tonight, Father, uh, with uh, authenticity and attentiveness, attentiveness that they deserve we ask for these things in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We invite you to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Flag is moved. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we've got some public hearings tonight, folks, and our first one is a request for basically the, we have two hearings that are very much related. If the first hearing doesn't move forward, the second hearing about the permit is moot, but it involves Jan's Residential. It's a, a assisted living facility at 307 North High Street. It's been in operation for several years, and those facilities are allowed by right, by state law, if it's a residential zone, but no more than eight people. The town manager discovered last year, in consultation with the owner, Judy Bennett, who I believe is here tonight. Is Ms. Bennett here tonight? Yes. yes, we'll recognize you in just a moment. That there were 11 or 12 people residing at the facility, and it's only permitted, according to town zoning, up to eight. So it's what we call a non-conforming or non-compliant venture as we speak. The town manager presented to the planning commission an alternative to have it be brought into compliance to rezone the property, uh, residential business, I believe, or, or allow, is that right, residential business? That would allow assisted living facilities with a permit to have up to 12 residents. So what the town manager is proposing is to bring the code, have it reflect reality. But it is currently non-conforming, uh, non non-compliant. Um, and of course, the town council, would, the town, the Planning Commission recommended a rejection of the request. They did so about 30 minutes into their hearing last month. The applicant was running late. She did not have a chance to present her case, but the vote was taken and recorded. This council has the right, though, to do whatever it sees fit. It can, it can follow the Planning Commission's recommendation. It can flat out approve it. It can approve it with conditions. So at this point, I'll open the public hearing. This is on the concept of rezoning. Because then if this goes forward, then Jans will apply for a permit. But this request is being spurred by Jans Residential at 307 North High Street. Anyone besides Ms. Bennett who would like to speak in favor of the request? I know Ms. Bennett does. Ms. Bennett, the floor is yours. If you'd like to speak. Hey, no, sir. I don't have nothing to say. I'm just waiting on your decision. Okay. Um, you did say, I think, at the Planning Commission that you did not have 12 any longer that you No, have. I don't have 12. Sometimes they get sick, they just try to go to go to nursing. And how many do you have current? Right now it's 10. Right. But if this council, do, but just so we're clear, Ms. Ben, I want to give you every right to due process. If this council follows the Planning Commission recommendation, you can have no more than eight, and the town manager will have at his discretion the authority to enforce his annual ordinance I'm sure we want to do it as humanely as possible, but it would mean right now two residents would be displaced. Yeah, I just place them. I just call DSS and they'll place them. Okay, I just want to make sure you're f fully aware of the gravity of the situation. Yeah. Okay. Who here tonight, if anyone, would like to speak against the proposal? There, there's not information in your packet. There was a neighboring property owner, and Ms. Bennett, I don't know if you knew this or not, but someone in the neighborhood did write and complained, 
and voice opposition to the request for expansion. That was at 305 North High Street, I believe. I don't have the letter in front of me, but that was a matter of record at the Planning Commission hearing. Anyone here tonight to speak against the proposed rezoning request? I see Mr. Christopher Page, have you come up? So the I just want to ask, did we know that, um, the number of police calls to that, to that location? Well, I was hoping that would be in the packet. I've been privy to that in my other capacity. It was something like 46 calls over the last three years. A lot of them were resolved before police got there. Some were medical in nature. Uh, I think a lot of them were you know, disturbance, arguments, that sort of thing. I don't recall anything like at Clay's Assisted Living five years ago when that was heating up, you'd have the occasional fight, had a few stabbings, that sort of thing. You had residents wandering in nearby yards. I don't recall anything of that magnitude, but I'm, I'm going by memory here. But uh, I didn't know if I was supposed to put that in the packet. So it's okay. If y'all want to see it, I can right. email it right. to you. It's a matter of public record. Well, I'm going to close the public hearing. Members of Council, what's your pleasure? Planning Commission has recommended denial. Of course, they did so before Ms. Bennett had a chance to make her case. She's had that chance tonight. She's currently at 10 residents. She's allowed at 8. And the thing, to, the thing that's very important for every resident of Blackstone to understand, these facilities can locate anywhere in town that's zoned residential, which is most of Blackstone. As long as they have eight or less residents, they're legal. So if a home is for, for sale beside you and someone buys it one day and you look around going, wow, what's going on here? Then you find out it's, this, this council's hands are tied when it comes to eight or fewer. What is your pleasure, members of council? May I ask some questions? You sure can. Um, the zoning commissions, uh, was there a reason for that? Is it just, is the denial just based on that the zoning requirement says eight, or is that another reason for it? I think beginning it was because it was after the fact. It's only supposed to be eight. Okay. That's what our zoning says, and then she had gone up to 12, and I think. Mr. Miller and Philip went by to visit one day with her, and that's when she told them that she had more than the eight. So I think it started with it was because after the fact. But there was a very important uh, distinction. A, a month before the hearing, Mr. Watkins proposed this, yeah. the zone. But then he realized a month later, I think I'm paraphrasing here, that because so much of black, we have a large area of blacks in the zone general business, that he, he feared that this could, you know, once you do this, you're setting the president throughout the business district which includes South Main Street, all the way to, you know, you're, you're including a lot of the places that could have up to 12 people. Um, I think the other reasoning was if we're going to spot rezone reactively, it wasn't looked upon favorably, just to reactively rezone one house in the residential business. Well, we had a plan for that, for it, but then after... She didn't, Miss Bennett didn't show up. Tommy right. withdrew she his, uh, she was late, she was late. She was late. So Tommy withdrew his uh, plan that he had as far as rezoning it. Right. So there was a way that we could have rezoned it. Oh, that's what we're, absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. I would ask council to consider this, though. If you do, and this council does have the authority to do what it wishes, when it wishes, if you do legislate after the fact, the next time you discover a zoning violation, you will feel compelled to also bring that in compliance. And you do not know what that might be. That might be a junkyard on College Avenue. It might be a, a, a something that's too tall. You know, it, it, you just never know. Once you, you know, I appreciate the town manager's uh, desire, and we all agree that these folks need a place. There's a growing need for the for adults. Uh, some people call them group homes, but they're assisted living facilities. And a lot of them from Blackstone. What's that, ma'am? I say a lot of them that I have is from Blackstone. Yes, ma'am. Well, if council takes no action, it dies. And she can't apply for two years. The way a zoning application works. If you don't take action tonight, the Planning Commission recommendation stands. Make a motion to uh, go with Planning Commission's recommendation. Councilman Allman has moved to follow the recommendation of the council, and that would be to deny the rezoning request, which would affect kill the conditional use permit as well. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Nash is seconded. Any further discussion? I have a question. Yes. 
Um, I would like to know what's going to happen to the two that's going to be displaced. Are we going to give, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember your last name. Miss Bennett. Bennett, time to get those Absolutely. I, mean, I don't think we're going to say that effective right now. No, no. But I mean, we just have to say oh, that yeah. because somebody's thinking that because I'm thinking it. So we just have to speak it out into the opening because um, I understand we have to follow the regulation. I'm all good for following that. But I hate to see somebody, another person left homeless. I would say in Blackstone. I mean, would you, would Mr. Allman amend his motion? I, I'd even, I'd even say go farther. I, I'd say amend it to give by August, by September 1st. How much, how much time days. is reasonable for you? It's all depend on the home. The home got to accept it. I could call, let's say your home, and you look at the UAI and you accept them or you don't accept them. I can't just kick them up. I got to go to another home and hope somebody accept them. And I would like to say for my, I did not know. When I opened that business in 2006, Mr. Arlington approved the zoning for 12 people. So it wasn't like I was approved for eight and then I just went to 12. That's what mm -hmm. Mr. Arlington did. So when I was trying to purchase the building, the property in the back, that's when I talked to the mayor. And then he said, oh, but this, the zoning is wrong. So it wasn't that I just did, did that on my own. Well, well, I want to say for the record, Ms. Bennett, we've, all, we've heard that, and, and no one has suggested that you willfully violated anything. The only dilemma you find yourself in is that gentleman, Mr. Ellington, you're referring to former county building inspector Al Ellington. He has no supervision over town zoning. He is only a building inspector for the county, oh, gotcha. and that's not your fault. Um, you were just you were given some, some uh, inaccurate information. That's, that's now bearing fruit here tonight. Uh, I'd ask Mr. Alma to amend his motion September 1st or as soon as possible with a report on this ag council's agenda on the third Monday in September for a status report on the capa on the occupancy of Jan's residential. Would you I'll give it longer than that. I'd give it to the first of the year and then a, then a report I'll the I'll say so it all depends on a facility. Okay. Except go, go, go. if right. they're wildland, if they're um, low to elope. No other facility can get the stuff in there. All right. So they're going to say no. All right. And I can't kick them up on the street. Yeah, Ms. Bennett, we thank you. We don't want that. So Ms. Ms. Mr. January. Allman's motion has been amended to, to allow up to January 1st and to have a report for the new council to take office on the fourth Monday in January. Right. So and Mr. Nash has seconded that motion. <clears throat> Is there any other discussion? I think that's a wonderful decision yeah. because I do UAIs and I work with nursing, so I know her dilemma. So that's why I asked the question. So, yes. Good question. Who, uh, we, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. That brings us, that takes care of public hearing number one. It makes public hearing number two moot. We are now on public hearing number three, which is establishing the wards under the new districts. Members of council, you have it in your packet. Um, this is just a legal definition of the, of the wards, wards A, B, C, D, E, that are in your packet. Any, uh, and this is a public hearing. Any members of the public tonight wish to speak on... On the wards. The only thing that was changed in there is under A, it said something else, and it's now Commonwealth Regional Council. Yes. And then the only thing on B was effective June 4th, 2022. That was the only thing that changed in this. Right. It's making these wards, uh, these new wards will be in effect for the new, for the election on November 8th. And early voting starts on September 25th. I see no members of the public wishing to comment on the ward definition. It's boring geographical boundaries. I see Mr. Wesley Gormis. If you come to the podium, sir. Oh. Not for my benefit, for the benefit of the people who might be watching, uh, having popcorn right now, watching live <laughs> with that nice bright red shirt of yours. <laughs> I would just like to put interject here about the uh, definition you said. If the definition includes the description of the boundaries, vents, 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 as currently in the code, I would hope that you all would consider some other way of defining the lines because that is about as confusing as a union contract. And guess who writes union contracts? Attorneys. Guess who writes boundaries? It's, uh, I mean, you know, it, it, having the map to get signatures and trying to use that to, as a guide for that, you almost have to go for the heart of the board to yeah. make sure that you're getting people that are, right. that are within your boundaries. When you right. to, I think that's written in order. For future, future use. I you're exactly right. For the average layperson or even above average layperson, it's very complicated. I think the way the law is, that's how they're required to, to be recorded. But, may, but we, we'll look into that. I mean, it, it could be a list of not names, but just addresses. The right. addresses are in your ward. Correct. It's not like we have a million. You know? Right, right. Uh, 
I mean, we live in a small town until you read the description of the wards. You think we live in Los Angeles. That's all. Anyone else besides Mr. West Gormas? I'll close the public hearing, members of council. You approved these earlier this year in concept. What is your pleasure tonight? Move to approve as presented. So moved. Mr. Miller has seconded Mr. Nash's motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries 7 0. This next one is very important, and this is basically the polling places for these wards. And in the past, the elections have been in May, so everybody in Blackstone has had five places to go vote. You either vote in Ward A, B, C, D, or E. This year, because it's a general election, and for example, this year we're voting for Congress, well, folks in the town of Blackstone have two places they normally vote. They either vote at the back of the police station, that's Precinct 501, District 5, or District 401, Blackstone Primary School. So what the council is proposing, staff's proposing, is that wards A and B and E would vote at Blackstone Primary School. That means when they show up to vote for Congress this year, you'll give your voter ID card. They go, oh, you're a resident of Ward A, B, or E. You vote here. If you live in Ward C or D, you'll vote at the back of the police station. The only concern I have is not going to be perfect. There's going to be somebody that votes, normally votes at the back of that police station that lives in Ward, uh, let's say Ward E, that's going to have to go two places to vote that day. And it's simply unavoidable because of the state law <clears throat> moving the date of the election and our ward system, which is court ordered. So anyone tonight wishing to speak, the key is when in doubt, call the registrar's office. They'll tell you exactly where you vote. Um, I see no one wishing to speak from the audience. Any members of council have any questions? Just out of curiosity, so if you were in that, in that situation, you'd go vote for your congressmen and women? Mm-hmm. And then when you went to the to your second polling place, would there just be a ballot with just those just one question on it? That's what I fear too. That's yeah. the problem. You, what Mr. Alm is saying is very important, and it's also and I, based on my understanding, it's quite likely there'll be a few that you will have to go somewhere to vote for your congressperson, but you may not be able to vote for your town council person because they're in the other precinct. Do you vote twice for Ms. Spanberg, uh, Bob Good, or his challenger? I think we need to get some more clarification on Do we have to approve this tonight? Because I wouldn't think we have to have polling places. The wards, yes. Yeah, the wards we've done. But I, this, I think they're going to be – I like to know the number of people it applies to, and I think we've got to have those identified for poll workers. Mm -hmm. Let's get some more information. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, – We've had the public hearing, though. Well, we have. We have. Okay. And, and just to show, just to tell y'all, when I first ran for office in 2006, I stood outside the Blackstone Police Station and had 87 people show up to vote there. They were supposed to vote in Ward B, but they're like, I always vote over here. For, I'm like, that's true for president, you do. But in town elections, every four years, you vote over there. And these were, these were well-informed folks, not folks who don't, you know, these folks vote a lot. Um, so it's confusing, and a, a, a voter that's confused is not going to vote. So we want to make sure it's clear. So... We've had that hearing. I would ask to be, that to be placed back on the agenda for our July meeting. And next up on your uh, agenda, ladies and gentlemen, you have your minutes from the April meeting. We've had a lot of meetings, so we're catching up. Move, your to, move to approve the April 18th minutes. Mr. Nash has moved. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Jones is second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. This is the first opportunity for visitors. There are two opportunities tonight, uh, one now and one at the end of the meeting. Anyone from the public? We have none scheduled in advance. Anyone tonight wishing to address council? I see Mr. I see Ray Arms, Firefighter Ray Arms. Gene, go first. Yes, Mr. Gene Lax, if you don't mind, just so people can hear you, I'm a, I'm a, I don't want to steal your thunder. I'm feeling that it's picket court and speed bumps. I've just got a feeling. <laughs> and I'm with you. And I, sta I stand with you. Philip is not here, so I don't know whether I'm wasting my time or not. But I have talked with Mr. Epps from the VDOT. All he needs is for send his report in, and it should the town should start putting them in. So, I, I, Jennifer, do you know whether he's received the report uh, from Mr. Epps? We did get the report, and he says that um, uh, originally there was four, and after speaking to Ms. Lax, you now want five. And I haven't heard Philip say yay or nay on the five. Okay. So, okay. But they did send a report, and I think um, 
Phillips has been out sick for the past week, so he should be back in this week, and they'll finalize everything. Okay. But I think uh, I think everything's fallen into place, and they should be going this week. So the request now is now when you and I first ta started talking about this, we were talking about two. Then the last councilman, you were rather passionate about four. Am I hearing that five are now requested? My husband wants five. I'm surprised Paul don't want ten. <laughs> Would y'all settle for four if they get them in the right locations? To be honest, I don't know because they're really talking about the alley. Because he wants one like right near the alley. He I think said, start with four. He said put one in the floor. Floor. Let's have some more. Let's have some more. Miss Lax has a floor. There's a there. Where he's planning, where he was planning on putting the four, there is a gap between number two and number three, and that is where if people were going to speed, they'd start speeding. Okay. So that's why Paul says he thinks we need a five there. Okay. Because it, there is a big gap between two and three. Mr. Morgan had mentioned just a moment ago that maybe we could start with four. Would you like to make that in the form of a motion? I would. I think we should start with four, and if it's found that a fifth one is needed, then maybe because yeah. you're talking about a lot of speed ones in a small area mm -hmm. right there. So I think we should start with four. I, I, like yesterday, there were the kids were out in the street riding their bicycles, and this car came speeding through, and he could see the kids. And he stopped about this falling problem. Well, unfortunately, that's not just your street. That's about every street. Well, and I can tell you, speed bumps aren't going to slow. I mean, that's just not any sympathy, or they're not looking at other people Break at all. Break three drop off, Will. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. We have, we have a motion. Is it, Mr. Morgan's motion been seconded? I need a second before we begin discussion. I second it. All right, Ms. Williams, a second discussion. I think Jake's question is: it in order being that the report's going to say four? Do we need to? Do we need a motion? I think the report says five now. So what after Mr. Epps spoke to um, Ms. Lax. So you think the recommendation is going to be five? He did that because after meeting with her. Okay. But I think the original request was four. But like I said, there's a well, gap between three. So we, so we might want to have the motion. Two and three. Do you want to have your motion say at least four, minimum of four? Would somebody second that? Would you second that motion? I second it. Well, Mr. Morgan's move at least four. We're going to recognize Ms. Michael Lax very briefly. Okay. I'm not trying to be mean or anything. That's like, all right. It should, he was probably talking about, like, there's a couple people that's not here. They probably want a stop sign, and that man was talking about a stop sign right there or a speed bump. And I'm just saying, I'm just trying to help my pop out and these people in picket court. Right. Because I just don't, there's a lot of kids that's being born, and there's a lot of kids that are coming out of town, coming to the grandparents' house. And this older lady almost got hit. This is her third time almost getting hit. And I just, what if she gets hit? The only thing I'd recommend, I hate to interject, the difference between a stop sign and a speed bump is you can run a stop sign and pick a court with immunity. And yeah. you can't go 25 over a speed bump without at least suffering something. And I'm just saying, I'm not trying to be rude to y'all, but if y'all were living in picket court and one of, if y'all have child and one of them got hit, what would y'all do? My position is very clear. If when residents of a street in Blackstone, wherever they are, they want a speed bump and they're willing to drive over it every day of their life, probably three or four times a day, that tells me there's a speed bump needed. That's real simple. I totally respect what y'all are saying and agree with you. And, and I can tell you right, at Juneteenth this past weekend, there were two portable speed bumps on both sides of Maine on Broad Street. And every time I ran into somebody with an eyesight, they're like, I want one of those on my street. It is a, it is a burning issue in this town. But, and that speaks to the traffic, the increased visitors, and we need to be prepared for more of those requests. Mr. Morgan's motion has been made, has been duly seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Up to four speed bumps coming soon to pick a court. What do you mean? At least four. I know, do you know I mean, when, Dave? When? Like this month? I think month? we need to wait till Philip gets back. Right. Yeah, we'll have to sign date. the agreement with B&B &B and then they'll get everything started. All right. You're taking a big step tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. We saw, we, we've been a speed bump of sorts. We didn't mean to be. <laughs> but we thank you. Who else tonight on, the, on round one of visitors? Yes, I see. All right. Y'all town boy. firefighter Ray Arms. Yeah, how y'all doing? Uh, last month, did y'all approve our retired to a ditch on the north side? I think the month before, I think in May we did, didn't we? Or was it June? Council... Northwest Avenue, it was May, yes. $87,000 on Northwest Avenue. All right, uh, my dad's been trying for right at 20 years to get one of the town ditches fixed. 
and y'all keep ignoring it. So how can this person come in, this ditch was not on anybody's radar, and all of a sudden get approved? It is the town's runoff from Main Street. The reason he ain't here is because he gets emotional and he'll start hollering and all that. I'm trying to be social for it. When I was a child, I, me and my sister could step over the ditch. Most of y'all have been there. It's your backyard. You can park a tractor trailer in it. 20 years ago, you probably would have spent $15,000 to have it repaired. Now, it's probably 51000 four or five years ago that y'all had talked about. But you're approved to one for $87,000 out of the blue. So how do you get the town council to approve a ditch that has been been asked for for 20 years? It's your water, it ain't our water. Right. So, so if I go fill it up with concrete, what happens then? Y'all can come after us blocking the, the waterway because it is downtown water. It comes from uh, right at Spencer's Drug, comes down behind the car wash, right through Gurdman Pool, right through my dad's backyard. Mm -hmm. So, let me, let me, there for years. let me answer your question. It's two, it's two drains there that the town of Blackstone put in because the drainage from Gurdman Pool. When they would rinse their trucks out, it was set in the road and the town came in and put the drainage in. Right. And now nobody wants to maintain the ditch. Well, let me attempt to answer your question first. You asked a very yeah. factual question and how did council do this? Council had, that basically had a study and rated, rated the ditches, got prices on the ditches, and the ditch that you say came out of the blue, Mr. Somerville has been corresponding with the town manager not as long as 20 years. Uh, 20 years? No, no, not as long, but th the argument was made to the council that there was a home, that I think it was Mr. Robert Evans' home uh, and pr was in jeopardy uh, more than any other ditch in town. So that we take off three quarters of or a quarter of the taxes on our property, because I'm, we're going to get to the land sooner or later because right. we've lost over a quarter of our yard of our property we pay taxes on right. because we can't get to that piece of property because the town of Blackstone's ditch. Right. Now, so what are we supposed to do? That, so we were, we're asking advice from y'all because it seems like we come here, we've been 20 years asking about this ditch. Right. I y'all will be clear that both estimates were that presented that night. And I will be honest. Yeah, yours was not discussed. As you, yeah, I do remember. No, it was on the list. It was no, his 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 estimate was there, but there was, was no there, there, we never discussed. There was no one advocating for your ditch. We didn't know that right. Right. if right. you don't call nobody, right. we don't know when y'all are discussing right. the ditch. Right. And and to, make, it, to make things say. simple, hold on a second, Let, real quick, and I, Mr. Miller. Okay. To make uh, well, I remember when I first got on council, his ditch was talked about, and me and Philip had talked about it too. And this is when I've been talked about it more than once. Yeah, yeah. It, it has. <laughs> ben Green, when he was on council, we met out last month outside, and he goes, Yo, they ain't got your ditch fixed yet? Well, oh, nobody's been on. Oh, let me, let me clarify know. something. Well, this is very important. The previous council on which Mr. Green and others served made a policy rule that council would not go on private property for anyone's ditches. Of course, councils change and come and go. And this council has chosen to take things on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, Sixth Street, over in front of Burning Nullies. Yes. Uh, Talking about Linda Blevins' house. Yo, that was when you didn't go on property, but you went on that property and fixed it. Right. I went over there and looked at it. But there was a reason for that as well. And again, we can. Well, I'm just, I'm just yeah. trying to, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to rebut you. I'm just trying to provide yeah. you facts. The council at that time used a rationale that the town had gone and put that drain in her yard years ago, so the town had its fingerprints on it. The town had started the. All right. Right there on Dillard Street is a drop on the town put in. If you go down, it's another drop on the town put in, and it goes over to a uh, culvert that the town put in. So it's a it's a it's a valid argument. I'm not I'm not I'm not disputing your claims. I'm just explaining. You ask questions. I'm trying yeah. to tell you what happened. And I'm trying to find out when y'all plan on fixing this ditch because if I call the concrete people and fill it up with <clears throat> concrete, then y'all's water is going to go somewhere else. Because it's on this property. Yeah, it's on our property. And we I also would like to say my dad is a volunteer firefighter. Absolutely. And he gets treated like this. Well, we we, we value. 40 years. He's been a phenomenal firefighter. Still is a phenomenal firefighter. But you remember how much it was? It was 50 some thousand, 51,000. This was 51,000. Yeah. We've lost quarter of our yard. We're paying taxes on something that we cannot use. Yeah. All right. All right. 
Well, I could take the easy way out and refer this to the uh, Street and Light Committee. We know how this goes. Well, we, we played this piano many a times. All right, or, or, or Mr. Arms, I could ask council to make a motion tonight, one way or the other. So what? What, yeah, what is that going to be involved in fixed? I mean, is piping? Was it not, Mr. Nash? Wasn't it pipe? What was it? The, the, rem piping. the remedy was piping, wasn't it? That estimate only included piping it for 100 feet. Yeah, that was it. For 100 feet that, the that was only 100 feet. foot. All right. It was not for the whole ditch. All right. I don't even know the whole length of the ditch, to be honest. I, I don't know. I don't but know. that was it's more than 100. 100. It's more than 100 feet. Yeah, yes, sir. It's more than 100 feet. Right. That, I, I do think know the estimate that. was 57,000. Yeah, yeah. And the other one was 87. Just about everybody on previous councils, I know some new faces up here, had been, oh, yeah, we're going to come I'm, over and look at it. They would come and look and forgot about it. And we could come back up here. You forget about it again. And then we see that another ditch has popped up that y'all are going to do. And I understand different people have different reasons. Right. We've lost a quarter of our yard. Right. And we had a situation on Sullivan Street years ago, Mr. Michael May, where I went down there before I became mayor and the, the daggone driveway was about to collapse into the creek. And I think council that time did a, a rocks and things and, and to stabilize the situation. But, but, but remember as to why the town did that was because we put a sewer line right there and it created that issue. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, I think the town drainage is creating oh, no, this I, issue. But right? I'm going back to the ditch that we've approved, which again, everybody knows I'm 100% against private property. And I would be against this one, but I'm also 100%, 150% against the one we've approved for 87,000. Right. Right. We're just opening the can of worms here. It, it's getting ready to get bad. Well, with have. this one, you have structural damage. With this one, it's coming. Right. Mm -hmm. Before it's over. Well, why is it our problem that structural damage? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Why is it our issue that it's structural damage? It's not our ditch. It's not our water. Well, the town it's put that ditch in. The well, town put that in. ditch in. Well, now, yes, it did. now Mr. Ar Mr. Arms maintains that the water is coming from town five. Right. It's coming well, yeah, on town. That's talking about Mr. We're talking, about, talking about the, the 87,000. The Northwest Avenue ditch. The town built that ditch. Larry Palmer had that ditch. We built a ditch, but we don't have an easement for it. Who said you don't have an easement? We don't have an easement. Northwest Avenue. You did what now? We don't have an easement for it. We did. How about council try this? Again, not trying to pass the boat, but trying to move the people's business along. How about council agree in concept that if, it, if there's another, the, the next ditch to be repaired in Blackstone will be the ditch behind the arms residence? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's either that or just say no. I mean, say, take your. I mean, it's either that or it's either that or do it tomorrow. The votes on the votes on here for that. Well, let's just wait till Philip is here, okay. and then we put it on the meeting for next month and address okay. this so we can cover it with. Well, I can come back. I just okay. yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Let's put it on the meeting for next month, right. and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, I'm not trying to get y'all to do like it today. Y'all like pictures of stuff over there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But well, meanwhile, Jennifer. Meanwhile, could Street and Light have a meeting before? Sure, you can call him. You're the chairman. You can call him. Call a meeting. We'll call a meeting for before right. this happens. Yeah, I'm not expecting y'all to approve it tonight. I just y'all had approved this one, and it's yeah. like y'all keep jumping over. Yeah, and we understand, and what you're saying makes sense. But Evans, he been dealing with this for years, and he worked with the town. And I mean, if you see his house, I know that's not in it. Your yeah. business, but if you see his no. house, then you'll be like, "Oh wow!" Yeah, I, 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 and, and I see where you're coming from you know. too. So it makes sense. But yeah, I know, Robert. yeah, yeah. So let's. So, but you know, the town and, years back took a whole house they tore down and put it on one side of the ditch, and it didn't even create a dent in it. So that'll tell you how big the ditch is. Yeah. Let's see. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll be on the third Monday of July, and meanwhile, the committee will have a meeting, and uh, we thank you. Thank you for your patience and. Yeah. Well, I also want to thank you both, you and your father and your sister, for serving the community the way y'all do. Thank you. Uh, before, during, and after fires. Anyone else tonight under round one of the visitors? This is good stuff, folks. This is important stuff. This is why we live in a small community. This is good stuff. All right. I'll close this part of the meeting, and we'll get on to the fire chief support. Chief Tomer. Good evening. Good evening. Um, really not much, fortunately, on the uh, agenda for me tonight. Um, we will be voting tomorrow night on a countywide record management system. We'll actually be doing a um, Zoom meeting to get all uh, people involved to update how we're putting in fire reports and submitting them to the state. This uh, is a requirement. Fortunately, the town currently pays for this service and it's gonna be taken over by the county 
if they approve the budget, I believe tonight is the That's night correct. for tonight. them as well. Hopefully by now they're done. Um, also, thank you to the mayor who came out and spoke when we pushed in Engine 3. We got that in service. It's, uh, it served its, its job on its first fire call. Um, also, we continue to have abandoned project. If you notice reflective bands on any hydrants in town or don't notice any bands, please let us know. Um, I'm sure the clerk doesn't have anything really pressing and she would love to take more information, but you could, weeds and grass. You could uh, <laughs> email her or, or send me an email and we'd be more than happy to add it to the list. The reflective band is, a, is an awesome feature that we have on our hydrants. Uh, some of the places up north, they actually have like a four foot pole that is reflective just because the amount of snow that they get, we, uh, we're very beneficial. We don't have to dig out our hydrants. Um, we had several members pass uh, training. We, Will West Jr. Uh, took EVOC. He's certified to drive a apparatus now. And we had a couple pass their hazmat operations and Dante Brown passed his EMT. Huge amount of hours that these volunteers put in for training. We'll be hosting a pump operator course coming up in September that's gonna be open to anyone in the state that would like to come. This is gonna be part of a regional school coming back to Blackstone. Um, firefighter Ryan Nash is now considered a life member of our department, 20 years of service. That's awesome. Uh, which is a, an excellent asset. That puts us at 18 um, current members that have served over 20 years of service. That's awesome. So 18 out of our 51, 52 members have served over 20 years. Wow. Not good. Because that's like a third of your membership that's really old and getting worn out. They got lots to give. Oh, it they sounds got, great, lots but... To give. <laughs> lots to give. Grace still has a lot of That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, we have Assistant Chief Ben Hogg with 18 years of service as well this month. And... Uh, Put a little note there for my own reminder. I didn't know everyone can see it. Um, but we need to probably get back on the bandwagon. We haven't really discussed much about rental inspections with smoke detectors. Uh, I haven't heard much on the uh, the burner about this. And it, it was kind of brought up with the uh, Jan's um, services. You know, you have eight people within a household I'm sure they have to have a fire marshal inspection to be licensed, but I, I think that we need to really get in, push in this with uh, the county again. Uh, yeah, they're only doing about one one a month uh, on the building permits or rental inspections, if that. And, and some, at one time they were doing four or five a month. It's a lot more moving than that, I can promise you. Yes. So, I mean, we do need to make sure that we, it's an ordinance that we have. We need to, again, enforce it, make sure these people have quality, quality living. And what is the ordinance? If you own a rental home in Blackson, is it one per bedroom? What is the, what is the ordinance? I should know, and I don't. Fire code is one per bedroom. One per bedroom. Um, but one outside of each bedroom. bedroom. So if you got a three three bedroom rental, you should have a minimum of probably five smoke detectors. And I don't think they have to. Being that they're not new construction, new construction has to be wired. But I think. Just as long as there's one function in. Right. Um, we see it more times than we don't yep. of going to places where there's a fire and there is not a smoke detector. And the majority of them are rental properties. And we have no enforcement. You, the town, uh, the code, and ordinances do. So how is it that the town staff knows when a inspection is required is it when utilities are changed at that point I feel like it's too late once utilities are changed over in that main but at least then you can maybe make make a list and say hey this the utilities have changed time for it go inspect that inspection you know even though it's a little late I think when Yvonne was overseeing it she had contacted the landlords and it was their responsibility to contact us and somebody who was out to give time for the inspection to come in because right it, it needed to be inspected before somebody was and I think, right. what, was it three years that that one has been inspected? Within. Three years, I think. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it's because Javon's not here or why we're 
not hear from the landlord? I think we need to revamp it to where, because you can't rely on, I mean, I, I'm a, I guess you'd say a landlord myself, but there's a lot of landlords out there that own tons of properties in Blackstone, and they don't have the time nope. to sit there and think about it. I think if we're going to do it, it needs to be town staff when the utilities are changed over. We probably need to say, all right. You need to be the reminder. We need to. You need to. We need to send out and the inspector to go do it. So who would oversee? Who the tax finder would oversee it? That's the big question. That's something that Jennifer Beck did for many years, and then Yvonne was on that. And, and folks, just to give you an idea. In Blackstone, Virginia, right now, sixty-five percent of our units and housing units are renter occupied. Sixty-five percent. That's only going to increase when these other places open up soon. A lot of them this year. Um, of course, a hotel is a commercial facility. That's not a place where people you know, live, per se. And I think it was, if it um, was like an apartment building, one had to be inspected out of... Not all. And that was just for three years. Yeah, I think it was just one. And we did a bunch when it first started. We did a ton of inspections. So a lot of those properties that we did are good for the next, we should probably year those because we go right. through them later. So we probably just need to maybe send out letters to the... Landlords again and get the get it. Just have an initial letter. Yeah, <laughs> like Mr. Nash said, there's no, if, if there's no teeth though, the, whole, the sad thing is, three years yeah. smoke detector batteries go bad six months or a year, at least a year they're they're going to go bad. Right. What if we do it by complaint? When we when a utility changes over, we have a flyer that says these are the things your rental your place you're renting should have. If you do not have these, let us know and we'll put it on a list and to be inspected. Do our, they're not rental inspections, but might be electrical inspections if a that's the electrical thing that, that's because the arm bruce's fire that was the arm bruce's rule back in 2010. but i don't don't know as town staff you probably don't have permission to go into somebody's home and that's where the building inspector has the Correct. teeth in it yeah the building inspector would have how about town fire marshal i know we at one time sam only was a town fire marshal i want to say at one time 10 years ago do we and it, then it went to Knoll. Okay. We don't have an active fire marshal now. Mm -hmm. Would that well, be something you'd be interested in, uh, recommending that this council pursue a fire marshal? Even if we I did? think with the growth, there's no way Dean's going to be able to accommodate the town of Blackstone no way. in its entirety. No way. In addition to all the other services that he's doing. Um, and I think that's kind of where a lot of it's fallen off. But, you know, you're, you're looking at another position and the qualifications for that position are, are pretty, pretty demanding. <laughs> right. um, but there needs, there needs to be continuity. And, you know, even if somebody stays in a rental property for five years and there's not an exchange, there might not be a fire uh, smoke detector in there for five well, years. I mean, rental homes are now supposed to have, they have to have fire extinguishers underneath the sink. Could we have staff, we don't use this resource enough and it's at our disposal. Can we have staff, let's consult with Virginia Municipal League. They can find out what other towns are doing. We're not the only town of 3,500 in Virginia that's grappling with this issue. Let's use the re tools. Let's, can we have a report from staff, ask the town manager or his designee to talk to VML and see what other towns across Virginia are doing our size. Um, whether they have a fire marshal, whether they're sending it, whether their utility department is sending out the letter. But we all know what a letter is. A letter these days, first of all, you pray it gets there within a month. And secondly, if it's not a, if I don't think it's a check, I'm putting it in the trash, right. uh, or it's a coupon from Dick's Sporting Goods, or free golf clubs. Or <laughs> so let's let's do that uh, for next month and have a report next month. I feel like we we can't, we're going to have to do it ourselves. We're not going to be able to rely on the property manager or the the owner of right. The they're humans. Agents. They're busy and they're they're to yeah. call the town and go, hey, by the way, I've yeah. got a tenant checking out. Yeah. and need you to go check. It. I no. think we pass out a packet to the renter when they were going saying, hey, if your building's not having this, come see us. Right. And then we can pass that to the county to right. fix, right? To and I think that was discussed before, but the fact we were worried Third. about getting people retaliation. Angry. Retaliation, correct. Let's have that report next month. We're kind of in, in, in address the issue then. Can we do that, staff? Would that be okay? Sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> Very important issue, though, folks. We le we've learned very painfully how important those devices are. Um, Mr. Page, I'm going to move on. I got we got to we'll, we'll, there'll be a, a second chance for comment at the uh, at the end. Uh, anything else from the fire chief? That's all I have. All right. Next up, we have Thank your you. payment of bills. As my screen has gone, here we go. 
Bills not yet approved, total $1,340,544.51. They're a little larger than normal. Is it because of the later meeting or? Paving, 643000 What's that? Paving, 600000 That's true, that's true. These are bills not yet approved. Any motion to approve them? Mo motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? These bills are available for public inspection. And just to point out, there is $172,805 that is reimbursable from UMAC Storm Sewer. Part of that state grant. Start part of that grant. That IRF so grant. That which one is that? The UMAC. That's water construction mm -hmm. for concrete. It's part of the $600,000. Okay. Motion has been made and duly seconded. Who does a roll call? Starts. Is it Mr. Morgan's turn? We'll start with Mr. Morgan. Aye. 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 Motion carries 7-0. Next up are your bills to be paid. They are broken down by department. They also are a matter of public record. And they total $239,873.94. I need a motion to approve payment. So moved. Mr. Nash is moved. Ms. Jones is seconded. Any further discussion? You were talking about we need to utilize VML. There's a perfect example. Yearly dues of $2,200. Let's get that money's worth. With no further discussion, I'll have a roll call vote starting with Mr. Morgan. Aye. 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 That motion carries 7-0. There are no appropriations this month. Our first committee report is from the Employment and Police Committee. That is uh, Mr. Miller. And there one recommendation has already been taken care of, and that is rescinding council's decision to terminate the dispatching positions. They're in the budget, so that matter has been addressed when you adopt the budget later tonight, Mr. Miller told me before the meeting he'd like to see the job classification, uh, uh, job description of the DBI director that's being expanded to be uh, discussed by his committee before approving later tonight. Is that right, Mr. Miller? Right. Um, that's also in your packet. Um, you do have before you the job classifications, which also are part of the, part of the budget, I believe, aren't they? That would, that would, so I don't think you can vote on that when you adopt the budget tonight. Next committee report is accountant finance. That's Mr. Nash's committee. Um, we're going to adopt the budget later on the agenda. And DBI position, of course, we're going to try to nail that down. Our next committee is the airport and transportation committee. And after much discussion, I think the hangar rent is going to remain $100. Is that right? Mm -hmm. We compared it to the localities and, and what we have. And we decided that it's best to stay where it is. All right. So no action is needed by council on that. And under Buildings and Properties Committee, that was an interesting committee. Half of it was in C Park. Um, this is Ms. Scott's committee. I want to be sure I'm clear. The committee is recommending that for the John Neal request, and the members of the Neal family would like to have him honored, his memory honored. He died in 2010. He was the lead plaintiff in the historic Neal v. Town of Blackstone lawsuit in 86 that resulted in the ward system. It was a very historic uh, suit. And the family wants a bench outside the chambers and a plaque. And, and the committee's recommending that um, these items ex not exceed $2,000 and council will pay half of whatever the total is, not to exceed, so the town share would not exceed $1,000. No. And the second part of the request is, a lot of y'all think we've heard tonight about setting precedent and people coming forward. Uh, the second recommendation is if families want to honor a loved one that was a longtime firefighter or business owner or council member or whatever, there be an application process to try to set some criteria because, you know, my Uncle Bubba, who coached T-ball for 16 years, I want him to have a play. you got to have some sort, you know. And I think we discussed that once the Army is up and going, possibly having a, a wall of honor or a wall of, you know, something along that lines or, or brick pavers, whatever it be. We definitely have something in there for the mayor. Oh, Lord of mercy. <laughs> like, probably a dart board or been, a, a dart board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, members of council, you've heard the recommendation. Um, what is your pleasure on the recognizing the Neal family and future honorees? And before you go into yes. it, I believe what was discussed is if they do the bench and the plaque on the bench, then not the plaque for the wall to save that for when it goes, if the council chambers move to the armory. Is that is that correct? correct. So it was one or the other. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. The um, council, uh, the meeting, the committee, we voted, well, we discussed that we're going to do one or the other. We're not going to do a bench. And a plaque. So it's, it's oh, one or the other. It's okay. not going to be both. 
so they give the family okay. their decision, and then they want to do the second item, they're going to pay that out of pocket. So, count, so if they say if they wanted to have the town, town may put the plaque where the council meets, but they, if they also want a bench, they would fund the bench. Yeah, one or the other. They can help with one or the other, not both. Very good. All right, members of council, what's your pleasure on this part of the recommendation? So moved. So Mr. Miller has moved to approve the committee's recommendation, and Mr. Jones has seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? I would ask that as far as developing the application process, I, I think buildings and properties would be fine on that as well. Present to the full council at some point. And then the committee took a little tour of Sea Park, and there are various recommendations on that um, that are quite detailed about weeding and shrubs and crape myrtles and how best should we present this? I don't want to get now that was Lost in the weeds. A, that was to make a motion to advertise for a landscaper to do the to do okay. this work. Correct. That's just you know, this list is not replanting beds. This is just getting what's there back up to par. Okay. And then that's when we come back later with some hardscaping ideas um, to make better use of the park. All right. Then the committee's recommendation is to seek bids, which of course you have the right to reject any and all of them. Is there is there a motion by council to do so? Ms. Jones is moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Allman has seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries 7-0. Under consent agenda, there are no items. Unfinished. Can we add? Uh, I do have one add yeah. for the consent agenda. Sure. The Rotary 4th of July motorless parade. Can we just agree to have the chief um, coordinate for closing Main Street? On July 4th, I 10, 10 a.m. It's usually 10 a.m. It gets, starts from the war monument, the military monument to Sea Park. Yep. For that 30 minutes. Yeah. It's like the ninth annual, eighth annual, yeah. something like that. We do it every year. Comma consent, I believe, is fine on that. I, I am. Comma consent. 30 minute closure. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, 30 minutes at the most. Um, under unfinished business, we have item one. We have a new way of uh, this is a, awarding a bid for the delinquent tax collections. Yes. Treasurer Harris? Yes. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. And while you're getting ready to address council, just to remind everybody, how do we currently how do we currently collect taxes? Delinquent taxes. So personal property, we do DMV stops, which puts a stop on the registration, and there's a fifty dollar removal fee. Okay. We also use ERMS, which is the where we can take people's state tax returns. Um, real estate is either collected in office or by a collections attorney which currently we use um, Mr. James Elliott to collect. Okay, that's what I was thinking, okay. Yes. All right. So I am asking that we start using tax, which is a um, tax authority consultant. And Jennifer, do we have one of those packets available or no? We didn't bring any. They're based, they're based in Enrico. It's in the, it's in the, oh, it's in there. Okay. Okay. Taxing Authority Consulting okay. Services PC or tax, T-A-C-S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones who actually teach all of the Treasurer of Virginia classes, which I got certified through. Um, they are very organized, very easy to contact, to work with. Their fees are the same as any collection fee. Um, and Philip and I met with them, I think it was last week, to discuss real estate collections. But come to find out, they do all collections. They can do utilities, meals tax, business license, personal property, I mean, they do it all, any type of collections. And it's um, from start to finish collections. They track the payment plans. They give us quarterly reports. Um, it's very organized. Like I said, I would really like to use this company. It would certainly take some potential manpower and angst away from town staff. And, yes, it would. <laughs> and, and like I said, we don't have to be cold and clinical about it. We will still have some flexibility. Right. We're yeah, not going to unleash the hounds. Yeah, they still, they give, um, like now with Attorney Elliott, I'm able to offer a payment agreement through them, but I have to track it. And through this company, they do everything. They contact the customer, they track the payment agreement so it isn't lost in the files. Right. Um, How, is there an issue currently with Mr. Elliott? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, there yes, is. It is. It's how, just, um, how, I know it's a long process. It's a, it takes about a year, same with them. It'll take about, for real estate. Yeah. Um, meals tax and business license would take a shorter period of time, obviously. Um, Personal property would take a shorter period of time. Real estate, because you have to go through the auction. Right. Um, and also with them, they do hybrid auctions, which is very nice. So the customers, anyone who wants to online, bid right. on it can do it online, which is really nice. Um, with James Elliott, you can't do that. You have to go up to the courthouse to 
bid on it. And this firm gets paid basically, but it's a collection. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 Percentage. It's not so much out of town pocket, but just right. they get a cut. And what if, is their cut? If they don't, twenty um, percent. It is so. 25. Their agreement says twenty five, but we checked with Tessie, and the cap in the Virginia code is twenty percent. So I'm gonna. Well, we don't want to exceed the cap. Yeah, right. Well, so I, I told them I would let them know. An attorney any recommendation. Went, she reviewed the um, agreement and made a few things. So we're gonna. Um, we wanted to present this to you all tonight, and then get short, get straight with the twenty percent mm -hmm. to the twenty five, and then we're gonna present it back to them. And. Um, it, it worries me that I, I, I'm, they I'm, know the state law, but yet they put 25% in there. I, I'm a little, yeah, I'm looking at attorneys. Yeah, ding, 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 no. let, let it be duly noted that yeah. we, we might want to go 15 <laughs> if they're going to do that to us. Just, we might want to go 15. I mean, that, that's bothersome. Yeah. Yeah, the 20% is for taxes. Just the taxes. Yeah, the 25 could be for meals tax or business okay. license, um, things like that, yeah. Good job, Tessie. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> if we if we send this to Tessie to review mm -hmm. and we get the 20, 20 and twenty five percent, would it be okay if it's approved next month, or do you need it today? <coughs> um, no, I think no. I don't usually. I won't start my real estate collections probably until August anyway. Um, the only thing I'm needing to move forward with is the business license audit instead of using Tessie because I know she. Would rather not right. <laughs> do the collections for right. us. I would like to um, send them the business license audit, that, still delinquent that, that I have. The stuff that we're currently doing in house doesn't bother me mm -hmm. by giving to this company. But I would like to see. I don't want to approve this tonight for the real estate, just for the simple reason, um, the percentage wise. I want to clarify. Mm -hmm. And then number two, I'd like to see the process of what Mr. Elliott is, and where we're having issues with him, and what the process would be with this company. Oh, I've asked Mr. Elliott multiple times. So I would like to, to see it right. before. I will try my best. To well, get another it thing, if council does approve this, and I think it looks like it's going that way, it would be nice, if not monthly, could we could we see maybe monthly or quarterly, hey, guess what? You got this much money back that you weren't going to have a prayer of getting back um, just to see how that, well it's going. Yeah, they give us a quarterly report. You're automatically sent a quarterly Love it. report. Love it. Um, Mr. Elliott. Did mm -hmm. Elliott bid it? No. no. They were, this was RFP, and they're the only ones that responded. I'm surprised too. Because I thought maybe he'd spell out his process. I I contacted Mr. Elliott for a process twice and I never got a response. He's been the no, delinquent. He doesn't need it. <laughs> he's yeah. been the delinquent he tax attorney for 25 that. years at the county at uh, least. Okay, so I think we need to move. What on is council's pleasure? Do you want to make a motion contingent upon some of the things Mr. Nash said? Mr. I would be fine if we did all of them with this agreement mm -hmm. that we currently do in house to re alleviate you guys. Some. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, the main one is the business I started. I want to move forward with that. Well, we need to move. We, yeah. That needs to go on fast. I'm Urgent. ready to send it. Yes. Urgent. Mm -hmm. So I make a motion that we proceed on with any of the tax collections that we currently do in-house, except for the real estate tax. We're going to hold off on that one. Okay. Until. So moved. So worked. All right. Mr. Nash, there's been a motion to proceed with tax, the Tax and Authority Consulting Services, PC, out with, of Enrica. With correcting the percentage. Correcting the, the percentage and... Ms. Jones has second that, and but you want some more action, information on the real on estate. The real estate. Mm -hmm. um, it, are we sure it's just real estate? I know we somebody said twenty percent on taxes, and then we said well, it wasn't just taxes. Yeah, we're we're going to correct. We're going to have more. I want to make sure before we go for meals tax, so that's not. Yeah, I specified that. that in Do you want to just wait and, and hold off and make take formal action on the whole shebang? At, no, we want our okay. business license. All right, motion stands. To be done. Motion has been made and seconded. Too long. Any further discussion? All in favor. Uh, I'll need a roll call vote because it would probably involve more than $10,000 over time. Ms. Morgan? Aye. 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 Motion carries 7 0. Thank you, Brittany. Perfect. Thank Very you. Very good. Wish you, but I just want to get some of those meals tax That's and fine. business license stuff straight. Next up, we have an item we've been, been discussing for quite a bit, and this is the proposed sale of land 45 acres, the last part of our industrial park. That's not really an industrial park, it's out there off Babs Lane. and. Um, Mr. Jason Walker, who has bought land from us out there previously, would like to buy it. We had an appraisal done to make sure that the people of Blackstone were going to get paid what the land is worth. That appraisal has come back at $2,000 an acre. Uh, SWCI, which is uh, Sarah Walker Construction Incorporated, is offering that price, which makes it about $91,000. Um, this, this council also had another offer of a lease agreement uh, from a company that was going to possibly put solar panels on it. Um, you had those two proposals before you, and members of council, what is your pleasure? 
we haven't heard from the other lately. So in my opinion, that that option is off the table. Mister, you look. Has he the talked to solar panel? Anything? We've heard nothing. We've been batting this around for nine months. Yeah, might as well get rid of it tonight. Yep. Is there a motion? I make a motion. Mr. Morgan has moved to sell the land. Second. To uh, 